All right, today we're going to talk about dispute resolution and the tactics that we can use to try to resolve an issue amicably between two people or two groups of people. Stick around. All right, man, take a seat. Look, look. Ordinarily, we'd start with uh, orientation of the car here, but we got calls pending and we got to get to them. So, we're rolling. We're going to have to learn on the way. All right, today, I. All right, now, when we're talking about dispute resolution, we're talking about two parties that don't get along, and what we're trying to do is gain voluntary compliance from one of those parties, whether that's getting one party to leave or getting the other part, one party to acquiesce to the wishes of the other party. We're trying to get somebody to do something that they don't ordinarily want to do in order to resolve the issue amicably for everybody. So for dispute resolution, I want to give you a few tools that you can put in your toolbox, some of which people don't always think of. I've got three subsets here. I'm sure there are more. And I have two methods or tools you can use for each of those subsets. I'm sure there's many, many more than this, but this is what I've come up with kind of off the top of my head. We're going to start with the selfish ones. When you make a selfish argument to someone, we're making an argument that they should be selfish about the issue and look at the consequences that they're not complying is going to have for them. A simple example of this is money, a prime motivator for many, many people in the world. Money is an easy argument to make for people. If the argument is between husband and wife and it's over $20, or if the argument is between a merchant and a shopper and it's over $20, a very easy thing that we can say is, hey, listen, we're talking about a dispute over $20. If this turns into somebody getting locked up, do you know what the bond's going to be? You know what the bond's going to be for if you get locked up for theft today? It's going to be $100 or $1,000 or however much it is for your state. I'm sure it's going to be more than $20. Very often, this settles the issue. The other one is time. Some people aren't motivated by money as much as they are about wasting of their time. And a lot of people are very motivated by a very closely related issue to time, and that is incarceration. You tell somebody, listen, you're going to end up getting locked up for theft if this guy doesn't get his $20 for the gas that you pumped into your car. Do you want to spend the night in jail, or would you rather spend $20? I mean, it's really only 20 bucks. And then you can add in, you know, to, to bond out after you spend your night in jail, you're probably going to need 100 bucks anyway. So you're coming out $80 short one way or the other. Do you really want to give this guy $80? Do you want this guy to win? Selfish reasons very often work. Moving down from that, we get ideological reasons. This doesn't come up nearly as much because normally it takes that person broaching the topic of the ideology in order for us to use it effectively. If we just try to use these effectively without the other person broaching the topic, very often it's going to fall on deaf ears. But if someone broaches the topic when you're trying to resolve a dispute, and they broach the topic of religion or some sort of us versus them, it would be silly for us not to use that if we can use that to our advantage. Again, we'll use the issue of the $20. What would Jesus do? You know, maybe Jesus would turn the other cheek and pay the guy the $20 when he took the gas out of the car, even though the credit card machine didn't read his credit card and now the $20 and yada, 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 yada. yada. What would Jesus do? If they broach the topic of Jesus, it's silly for us not to try to use it to resolve the situation amicably. Us versus them. If you're talking with the guy and the guy's having an argument with the girl, and you say, hey, listen, man, we all got crazy people in our life. Why are you going to make her win? Why are you going to let her win by getting you locked up? Very often, these types of things connect with each other. If he starts talking about, man, that B, blah, 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 use that to your advantage. Be like, man, you know, I got a crazy lady in my life too. You can't let her win the argument by getting you locked up. You can't let her win the argument by taking your car away. Use that to your advantage, push it back to them, and try to get them on board ideologically with you. The last one is the personal plea. This very, very often works, especially if you lead with it. I like to lead with the personal plea on a lot of calls. Very often this will work for noise complaints. You get the noise complaints, the uh, mariachi band at 11 o'clock at night, and you go to the people's house, and if you try to use these other issues first, you look like you're playing the heavy hat. If you come in with the personal plea first, it can make your life a lot easier. Two easy ones for the personal plea is, especially with a noise complaint or a situation like that, making my life easier. You show up, 
Hey, man. People are calling. We got four calls on you already about the mariachi band. It's 11 o'clock at night. People got work in the morning. It's, you know, it's a Tuesday night. You know, if you could shut that off, it'd really make, make my life easier. I don't want to be explaining myself as to why I have to keep coming back here. I don't want to keep driving off here. Really, man, all I want is to drink my coffee and go back to screwing around like I was doing before I had to come to this call. You'd be amazed how well that works. People say, oh, no, you know what? I'll turn it down. It's not a big deal. Which if we came in and said, you know, we're going to write you a ticket, oftentimes you get pushback from that type of tactic. And if all else fails with the personal plea issue, blame the boss slash law. You tell somebody on a domestic, hey, listen, the law is not made to protect you, you know, protect the guy against the girl. It's made to protect the girl against the guy. It'd probably be a good idea if you left for the night. Bam. They're like, oh, you got a good point. I'm out the door, especially if they don't know what the law actually is. They're going to be out because people are afraid of the unknown. And very often the laws are actually written that way. So if you explain it to them, the hard truth starts hitting people and they start realizing the gravity of the situation that they're in. Same thing works with theft cases. Hey, man, the law is on the side of the merchant in retail theft cases. You don't want to fight that in court with the judge and say that they made up the fact that you stole something. You might just be better off paying them the $20. This will resolve the issue, and then nobody has to go to jail. Nobody has to fight about this. People will very often jump right on that. Or blame the boss. Hey, I've been here four times for this noise complaint. You know, at some point, my boss is going to come out here, and he is going to make me write you a ticket. So when we start combining these things and making valid arguments for people as to why they should comply voluntarily, we can get that voluntary compliance and then not have to write tickets. We could show up to every domestic and just find some reason to lock somebody up for threatening somebody or screaming too loud, or we could show up to calls and just start writing people tickets to solve problems. And we still can do that. We can use that as a res resolution technique, but that should really be like our last resort after we've tried a couple other things that we think might work. The different methods that you can use to try to convince people to do what you want them to do or to resolve the problem amongst themselves are limited only by your imagination. But hopefully this gives you a good start for when you're trying to deal with your first few situations on calls or it gives you a good idea of what people have to deal with on the street every day when they get called to houses for domestics or noise complaints or other disputes. If you like this type of content and the message it sends about law enforcement, you'll learn something from it, go check out our Patreon page and throw a dollar in the tip jar. It helps me build a little studio in my garage and get the equipment that I need in order to do this. And maybe one day I'll have a camera with a little better lenses and much better audio so that way I can shoot a much higher quality video. Until next week, you guys be safe and take care of each other. I'd like to thank all the Patreon supporters and especially the shift supervisor level Patreon supporters that we have listed here. Your contributions are what allows free field training to continue on and become better. Thank you. Well, if you like that video, go ahead and subscribe because there's a whole lot more to come. As soon as I uh, finish up these calls, go 10-8. County 291. 291.